Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to add neon lights to your virtual set. First, I'm gonna right click in my content browser and create a new folder and name it Neon. Inside the folder, I'm gonna right click and create material. And this is going to be my master material and I'm gonna name it M for material underscore neon. Double click on it, right click on an empty space and search for constant three vector. Right click again on an empty space and find a multiply node. Right click on the vector three node and convert to parameter. I'm going to name it color. Right click on the B pin on the multiply node and convert to parameter or promote to parameter. And I'm gonna name this one glow. This is gonna set how much emissiveness the neon is going to be. So you can name it like glow strength and so on, but I just like to name it Glow. So now you can uh, output the RGB into the A input in the multiply node, and then on the output, go straight to the emissive color. I'm going to set the default value of the Glow Strength to 10. And since this is going to be my master material for all my other uh, neon materials, I'm gonna set the color to white. And you're done, go ahead and apply and save. Now I can right click on the material I just made and create material instance. And this one I'm gonna call it MI for material instant underscore neon red. Double click it. And because we set the color to a parameter and also the glow strength as a parameter, now we can play around with it here in the material instant. So if I tick this, and I can actually now change the color. And because I named it red, I wanna change this to a red color. Now you're gonna notice that it's actually looking kinda of yellow. That's because the emissive right now, the default value is actually set to 10. So if you set it to a number like one, it's gonna look a lot more red. And if I say set this to like 500, it's gonna look really white. So basically the more you add to the emissive multiplier, the brighter the material is gonna be and the more whitish it's going to look, the more color it's going to lose. So I'm gonna set this back to a number like five for now, or maybe let's just start with one first. And then I'm going to save this. Now, of course, depending on the design you're going for, you might need a lot of different neon colors. And all you have to do to get more colors is right click on the material instance we just made and you can just actually duplicate this and name it the color that you want. So maybe this one is gonna be blue and you can duplicate this one and maybe name it neon green and so on and for each you can just change the colors so this one is going to be blue okay and this one is going to be green so now i have all the basic colors ready so now I'm gonna start applying these materials to my set and because my set is just like red and white, I'm only going to be using the red and white material. And something that I like to do is actually just add some sort of like lining uh, to like the base of the stages. So for example, I'm gonna get the center area and duplicate it, hold alt. And I'm gonna make it like just like slightly bigger and I'm gonna make it like really thin. So maybe just like 0.1. And then I'm gonna make it like 8.1 by 8.1. And I'm gonna add, for example, the white neon to it. And I'm gonna bring it down so that, make sure your snapping is off. It is just like sort of right beneath the center part of the stage. So now I have this nice glow here and maybe I can make it a little bit smaller, like 0.5. There you go. And I'm gonna repeat this for each of these steps. So now I have sort of these like neon LED lights uh, for each of the levels of the stage. And uh, you can see the white is glowing a lot brighter because the emissive is set to 10 and the red is only set to one. So for now, I'm gonna set it just so that it's the same. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the triangles at the back. 
So on a real set, uh, these would probably be the equivalent of like adding some LED stripes to the set. And I'm actually done here. So now I want to add a post-process volume to my set. So make sure it's set to infinite extent, unbound, tick it. And now I can search for Bloom and I can start playing around with some of the settings. And I can rise or lower the Bloom effect from the neons. And if this is sort of looking too intense and you're starting to get these weird flares, um, you might want to go to your project settings and type in flare and just turn it off. And now you don't have those weird flaring on the screens anymore. It's looking much nicer. Another setting that you can play with in your post-process volume is the threshold. Just make sure it's on standard because if it's on convolution, you can't really play around with the threshold. So I don't really understand the technicality behind all this, but what I know if I set it to standard and I play around with the threshold, if I rise it, it will sort of like choke how much of the emissiveness is going uh, like around the area around the neon material. So if I, for example, uh, turn this down and I turn the intensity really, really high up, you can see there is a lot of, there's like this huge halo going around. And if I turn the threshold up, it will start sort of like choking it. So it's like limiting how much it is spilling uh, into the uh, surrounding. See, now I'm going to like turn the intensity down again, maybe to like two and can play around with the threshold. So you can play around with these two settings until you get the desired effect that you like. And that's all there is to it. I hope that was useful and I'll see you guys on the next video.